Hey guys, it's Chris and welcome to the Movie House and today I want to talk about Hamilton. As I've said before, I love me a good musical. It's a genre that many have derided as unrealistic, which is rich considering the highest grossing movie that came out last year starred a talking raccoon and a giant purple people beater. But sure, this is a bridge too far. So anyway, the story goes that after reading Ron Chernow's book on the life and times of founding father Alexander Hamilton, composer and playwright Lin-Manuel Miranda felt there was potential for one hell of a musical, and thus Hamilton hit Broadway back in 2015, and quickly became a massive financial success and critical darling. And it was another one of those rare pieces of pop culture that I wasn't aware of at first. Amber was the one that introduced me to it and got me really into it. And up until very recently, it was still possible for people to not even know what the hell Hamilton was, you know, with ticket prices upwards of like $400 to see it live on either coastline. But when you have Disney knocking on your door and offering to give you $75 million so they can have it exclusively for their streaming app, well, that certainly changes things. So now the levy is broken, it's on everyone's radar. For those still in need of a history lesson, Hamilton is a musical surrounding the life and early death of ambitious founding father, Alexander Hamilton. It feels weird saying no spoilers for something that's historical fact, but uh, you know, I guess I'll say it's awesome. The Disney Plus movie is a filmed live performance with the original Broadway cast from back in 2016. And as someone who has listened to the music front to back for the last three plus years, but hated the prospect of braving a cesspit like San Francisco to see it live, it's great to finally see with my own eyes Miranda's play in all its glory. I've run into many with no prior knowledge of Hamilton, expecting it to be kind of a buttoned up classic American musical like say 1776, which this play cutely calls back to at one specific moment. But no, the musical influences of Hamilton stem mostly from classic hip hop and R&B. This makes its soundscape wholly unique from its contemporaries. And it's a big part of why I think it's achieved the crossover success that it has. Hip hop has a youthful rebellious energy that modern audiences can understand. And having our country's first rebels singing in a way that makes these historical figures more relatable and not simply as portraits within our history books. The deliberate choice of having the majority of the principal cast be people of color helps convey the core conceit of the piece. This is our American inheritance. We have more in common with our shared past than we may realize. As the play says, we are young, scrappy, and hungry to succeed, to carve out our own little slice of the apple pie Americana. It helps that it doesn't suffer from the biggest sin of musicals, being front-loaded. Like, okay, think about your favorite musicals. Think of how many of those, their best songs are in the first half, and then the second half suffers for it. Like seriously, we go from Let It Go to Fixer Upper. The songs here remain a consistent high quality throughout. A large part of that is due to how Miranda ties specific musical themes with specific characters. So you know when you're about to get a King George song, you know when you're about to get a Jefferson song or an Aaron Burr song, you know, I'm a sucker for good let motifs. In fact, the general production is so goddamn cinematic that it makes one wonder if we've been doing this whole musical adaptation thing wrong the entire time. In most cases, not all, certainly some make the shift to film deftly, but most cases, when a musical is adapted to film, something, sometimes a lot of something, is lost in translation. My memory stars, you make me think of a man. Dinner and a show. I've never heard of this so disgusting in all my life. Sure, the Sweeney Todd movie looks great, but hiring actors and then expecting them to be able to belt it out the same way Angela Lansbury and George Hearn can is just setting yourself up for disappointment. I'll come again when you have judge on the menu. I'll come again when you have judge on the menu. Wait. But cast aside the brilliant songs in production. More than anything, Hamilton's greatest achievement is getting modern audiences interested in our founding fathers and our shared history. To make us have a genuine emotional reaction over people that lived damn near 250 years ago, that this is no fiction, that these are real people that had hopes and dreams and made mistakes and were just as human as we are today. Recent times, due to a combination of our piss poor education system, and a general historical ignorance mixed all together with years of social media fueled vanity has created individuals that think themselves justified in casting stones. That we as a society can simply write off the men and women that came before us rather than see them as the important, albeit flawed human beings that they were. To judge them for their character failings rather than their cultural and societal achievements. This mindset allows these armchair critics to think themselves superior even though their contributions to society are akin to like a pimple on the asshole of human history. 
And I greatly appreciate that Miranda's play doesn't shy away from these great men's shortcomings. That despite our founding fathers uniting for a shared vision, many of them didn't like each other at all. Thomas Jefferson, and to a lesser extent John Adams, are portrayed as antagonists to Alexander Hamilton for the sake of narrative here. But swing over to the John Adams HBO miniseries, for example, and that's all reversed. John Adams is a politically tone-deaf but passionate patriot who is the only founding father to not own a slave, while Alexander Hamilton is portrayed as an ambitious, power-hungry banker who essentially wants this newly-fledged government to more closely resemble the very monarchy that they fought against for independence. And the thing is, both of these accounts are correct because you can't fit people into boxes. It's not all black and white. We're all maelstroms of grace and hypocrisies, of brilliance and stupidity. No one is free of sin. And we cannot judge works of art, let alone individuals who came before us, for not being in keeping with modern sensibilities. That removal of context robs those individuals and those works of art of any humanity, but also it removes the stamp of progress upon society. But anywho, uh, if my spiel has left you intrigued, I strongly recommend giving Hamilton a watch. Whether it be for symphonic or historical reasons, I think you'll have a pretty good time. Because in the end, Hamilton is some top shelf cinema. Thanks again for watching, guys. And for those who have already seen Hamilton or have been fans for a while, what's your favorite songs, you know? Uh, for me, some of my favorites have to be like One Last Time, uh, The Election of 1800, Satisfied, I think that's a lot of people's favorites, and uh, Say No to This. Those are some of my personal favorites, but you know, honestly, I kind of love them all. But uh, yeah, I would like to hear from you guys. And if so inclined, like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel. I mean, uh, you know, I would greatly appreciate that. But most importantly, stay safe out there, and until next time.